Hi friends, welcome back to Meet Your Teeth. Those of you who don't know me, my name is Mevish. I am a dentist from India and currently practicing in UK as a dental therapist. First of all, thank you for an overwhelming response for my previous videos. Since then, I have been getting lots of queries regarding the application process to register as a dental hygienist or therapist in UK and also various other doubts related to this route of registration. This itself shows how limited information is available on this topic. So in this video, I have compiled all your commonly asked questions and I shall try to answer it to the best of my ability from whatever I have learned so far. As I strongly believe that if you have correct guidance, you can achieve your goals more easily, isn't it? Hope you all will find it useful. All right, so let's get started. Question number one, is it possible to get registered as a dental care professional being an overseas dentist? Absolutely. There are many overseas dentists who are opting for this route and have got the registration. As long as you are a qualified dental professional, have a BDS degree or an appropriate dental qualification from overseas, then yes, definitely you can get registered. And if you are able to complete the assessment application uh, form successfully and appropriately, uh, by this I mean if you can prove that you have all the desired work experience and knowledge to practice as a hygienist or therapist, um, I will be talking more about this in the upcoming questions. Question number two, how to improve the chances of getting registered? Okay, this is an interesting one. There are quite a few things that can make your application strong enough to be accepted, apart from your BDS curriculum, like um, if you can show sufficient work experience, particularly regarding the questions asked in the learning outcome form, and wherever you lack the work experience or any topic is not covered in your PDS syllabus, then you can opt for a CPT course, which can be easily done online. And if you have passed any of the UK exams like MFDS, MJDF, or even if it is just part one of ORE or LDS, so you can just attach your past certificate and the learning outcome of the exam, that is what you have achieved to, through this exam. This will be available on the res respective exam website. And uh, any other dental qualifications like masters or any additional training that you have gained. So just like how you are attaching your BDS syllabus to the application, you will need to attach the master's degree certificate and the syllabus. Question number three, will I get a visa or work permit? Well, this is so important to know because even if you get registered as a hygienist or therapist, but without proper visa, you cannot work in UK. Let me be very honest with you. It is extremely difficult to get a visa for these roles. I'm not saying it is impossible. However, it is very rare that I have seen anyone willing to sponsor someone from outside UK when they can easily find a hygienist or therapist in UK. That's why I only recommend this route for people who are already residing in UK, possibly on dependent visa or ILR. And another reason why this can be challenging is because these roles are usually self-employed. Okay, now you might be thinking what is self-employed? Basically, it means that you work on a freelance basis. Whereas in employed status, you will be on a contract or payroll. You will understand why this is important to know in the next question. Now, there might be a very few positions of hygienist and therapist which are employed. Having said this, a majority of the hygienists and therapists work on a self-employed basis in UK. Um, but it's always best if you can secure an employed status because this gives you more job security paid holiday and so many other benefits. Of course, not to forget uh, the possibility of getting a visa. Question number four, 
Can I work as a hygienist or therapist if I come to UK on student visa? Well, I know many candidates who are thinking to choose this route. Now, before you think about this, it is essential for you to know that on a student visa, you cannot work as a self-employed. This is clearly mentioned on the UK government website and the link is attached in the description box below. When you apply for a full-time master's degree, you will get a student visa for the time of your course. And hopefully from this year, there will be an additional two years of post-study work visa. Now, while you are studying, you will not be able to work for more than 20 hours per week. However, on PSWV, you will not have such restrictions. Mind you, getting into any master's program is costly. There are various universities that provide master's courses. Usually, the non-clinicals are less pricey compared to clinical. So when you are on PSWV, you might be able to work as a hygienist. But again, it will be very challenging to find a job as the employer would be hesitant to give a job to someone who is on a temporary visa. Therefore, I believe unless they are in desperate need of a hygienist or therapist, they wouldn't be very keen to give job to a student. If you are lucky, you might be able to do locum jobs or get an employed position. Now, the risk in this route is that if you are unable to secure an employed job within this time frame, then you will have to return back to your home country. So the alternate option can be to try to pass the registration exams of ORE, LDS in order to practice as a dentist within the limited time so that you can apply for jobs and the employer may sponsor you. Having said this, let me warn you that passing ORE or LDS is not easy, especially due to the awful booking system. You know, many a times people wait for years and years before they could actually get a seat for this exam. So if you are planning to do any masters, it's important for you to know that when you come here on student visa and you finish your studies, after that, to get a work visa, you should be on a job which gives you a set amount of salary or else you will not be eligible for the tier two route and will have to return back to your home country. Now, you will get a tier two visa only if you fulfill um, certain requirements. I have attached the link for this in the description box. My advice is whichever option you are planning, please do consider the pros, cons and the visa issues. It is your responsibility to check these things before you enter into any master's program. Let me tell you, once you register as a dentist, it will be easier to settle in UK. So what can be the other possible routes? You can start your preparation for ORE LDS exams and whenever you're ready, come to UK on a visit visa and appear for the exams. Of course, nothing is easy. Every pathway requires a lot of effort, time and money. Next option can be to move to UK on a dependent visa. That is, if your partner is a resident of UK or let's say your partner comes to UK on a student visa and you move with them on a dependent visa. Right. Um, let me remind you, I'm not a professional advisor to comment on visa related issues, but these are the few things that I have understood over the past few years. Question number five. Once registered, can I find work easily? Well, honestly speaking, getting your first job would be a struggle. And this is something anyone can expect for the first job. Because usually employers would like to select someone who has some UK experience. But don't lose hope. Everyone has to start somewhere. And I'm sure you will also be able to begin your journey at some point. Just keep looking actively for such opportunities. Many candidates have asked regarding how to get the first job and how to prepare for it. As mentioned before, it is a learning curve. 
difficult initially, but not impossible. So before you start applying for the jobs, you should be ready with all the necessary documents. And of course, most important is to be confident to start your clinical practice. You can get de detailed information about how to prepare for your first job in my previous video, that is uh, next steps after getting registration. Um, I have attached the links in the description box below. Question number six, should I apply for hygienist or therapist role or both? Okay, so this is your individual choice. Few things that can help you make this decision will be uh, to know the scope of duties. This is what are the duties that a hygienist or therapist can perform. As a hygienist, you will carry out procedures such as um, scaling, polishing, um, root surface debridement, mainly perio patients um, can use local anesthesia and apply topical fluoride and fissure sealants. Whereas as a dental therapist, you can carry out a broad range of duties. That is everything that a hygienist can do, plus taking dental x-rays, impressions of the teeth, restorations of the primary and permanent teeth, pulp treatment of primary teeth, extraction of primary teeth. So more or less all the, all the basic things that a dentist can do. I've just mentioned these duties very briefly. If you want to know in detail about it, please check the scope of practice document on the GDC website. Further to this, a dental therapist can undertake additional training and also perform whitening treatments. Other difference will be in the learning outcome forms. Obviously, as you can see, a therapist can perform more number of duties than a hygienist. So the learning outcome form for a therapist application will include some extra questions compared to a hygienist form. So you may need to do some extra CPD courses. Other things that you should consider will be the additional assessment fees. So for each title, you will need to pay some extra fees. Kindly find the exact amount through the GTC website. And finally, the job prospects. It is easier to get a job as a hygienist compared to a therapist because of the nature of job. Moreover, hygienist vacancies are readily available for locum jobs as well. Whereas for dental therapist, employers usually want someone with previous experience and who is more reliable. But if you are someone who is looking for a broad range of duties, then I recommend you to get registered as a therapist as the experience you gain will also be useful for ORE or LDS exams. Question number seven, where should I get my BDS syllabus and how to submit it? Well, you can easily get your BDS syllabus from your college or university, past students or current students, or your dental council. Now, BDS syllabus book should be properly numbered. Uh, that is, the pages should be in order and you should attach a cover letter to this. Please check my previous video that is complete guide for overseas dentists for what has to be written in this cover letter. And make sure that this cover letter should be signed, stamped and dated by your principal or dean. Question number eight how to fill the learning outcome form. This is the most important part in your application. If you can complete this appropriately, then you are most likely to be successful in getting registered. For your assistance, I am sharing an example here. You can find more information about this in my previous videos. Okay, so here you can see how you should mention the topic and the page number from your BDS syllabus for each question asked. You may include multiple topics for each question if you feel it has been covered in different subjects. Like, let's say for example, uh, if you see the first one here, it says recognize the risk around the clinical environment and manage these in a safe and efficient manner. So possibly these things might have been covered in hazards and precaution, dental materials and ethics. Did you understand that? Um, mind you, never leave any question unanswered. 
If you feel the question asked is not covered in your BTS syllabus, then you can undertake a CPT course on that topic and note it down. You can also see how to include the ORE and LDS syllabus as well if you have passed any of these exams. Now, this is just an example. If you have work experience, you can include that as well. So for all those candidates who had requested me for a more detailed explanation on this, hope you are clear with this now, right? Question number nine, what should be included in the professional work reference form? So have you read the small paragraph on the form itself that says how to complete it? So this tells us exactly what they expect to see in the professional work reference form. And as I had promised a few candidates that I will be sharing an example, here it is. So apart from your employer contact details, these are the few things that can be mentioned. As simple as that, nothing fancy or great. These are the duties that you would regularly perform during work, right? Um, say, for example, examining patients, taking radiographs, restoring the teeth, uh, diagnosing oral problems, performing oral prophylaxis, giving preventive measures, advice um, like smoking cessation and uh, doing amalgam or composite fillings, gaining verbal consent, um, managing anxious patients and stuff like that, right? One tip can be just make sure that the task mentioned here can be reflected in your learning outcome form. Obviously, I'm not asking you to mention anything that you didn't perform, but this will give you an idea of the duties that can be included in the form. Let's say in the learning outcome form, you can find a question that uh, tell me where you have uh, gained the verbal consent or uh, if you ex if you have any experience in this. So you can make sure that your professional work reference include this point and this can be um, matched and written in the learning outcome form. Does that make sense? Okay, somebody had asked me if they should mention the number of the treatments done. No, there is no need to mention the quantity of the treatments performed. However, this should include uh, if the tasks were performed independently or under any sort of supervision. Question number 10, which CPT courses to do and from where? Okay, there is so much confusion among candidates regarding this. Let me repeat it again. There is no sure short list of topics that are needed. It all depends upon whichever questions in the learning outcome form are not covered in your BDS syllabus, only for those topics you would do a CPT course. I have already mentioned a list of CPT topics that you might need to do, but I'm sharing it again. So as you can see, these are the few things that, uh, that might be very necessary to do, like safeguarding adults, children, checking for the signs of abuse, neglect, um, personal professional development, teamwork, complaint handling, ethics, GDPR, and stuff like this is usually um, necessary to do. All right, so from where you can do these CPD courses? There are so many organizations that provide these courses. Just browse over the internet. Mind you, only verifiable CPD is accepted by the GDC. You can read on the GTC website what does verifiable mean. I will not go into too much details for now. Okay, so you can find a lot of free CBD courses on Dentistry Study Club, Dental Care, Upper Line Training, My Dentist, and so many others. I have shared more information on my Facebook group. I have attached the link in the description box below. And you can find a lot of paid CPD courses on Isofarm, ProDental, CPD UK, and many others. So you can either pay for individual course or you can get an annual subscription. Question number 11, what is acceptable to show English language proficiency? This is a list of documents mentioned by the GDC that may be acceptable. You can find more information on the GDC website in the English language control section. So if you can have a look here, 
a recent primary dental qualification that has been taught and examined entirely in English, a recent pass in a language test for registration with a regulatory authority in a country where the first language is English, recent and continuous experience of practicing in, in a country where the first language is English, a pass in IELTS exam that meets the requirements set out in the guidance. So the most easiest way is IELTS of overall score is 7 and in each section at least 6.5. Somebody has asked if NARIC with English proficiency is acceptable. Um, maybe, but I'm not sure about it. So please contact the GDC assessment team to know this. And after you submit your application, if GDC is not satisfied with the documents that you have provided for the English assessment, then they will request you for another proof. Question number 12, should I hire an agent for completing the application? Mm, look, I'm not against any agents. I know quite a few people who do this, but as such, I cannot see any reason why do you need an agent, why you cannot do it yourself. I have done it myself and of course, not to forget, it was because of uh, very valuable advice from kind and dear colleagues. So absolutely, you can do it your, on your own, just requires some effort and time from your side. Moreover, agents cannot legally complete your application. They may be able to provide you some guidance, which I believe will be more or less similar to what we have already discussed. However, if you think you cannot spare that much time and you are able to spend a good chunk of money, then it's totally up to you to decide. I would like to emphasize that the guidance notes which are provided in the application, it is the most valuable resource. So please read it carefully and thoroughly. And if you have any doubts, you can email your caseworker or the GDC assessment team. And of course, I'm here for any advice. Before I finish, I would like to highlight that recently some dental organizations have raised concerns and asked the GDC to suspend this route of registration or arrange an exam and only allow registration of the candidates who have passed the exam because they think that the standard of the care could be compromised. So it's my sincere advice to all of you, always bear in mind patient safety work in the best interest of the patient and strive to deliver the highest standard of the dental care. At the moment, nothing has changed regarding the registration process, but in future, you never know if there might be a different type of assessment. That's all for today. Thank you for watching and please do let me know if you like this video by clicking thumbs up and if you found this useful, share it with others because there are loads of people who are in need of correct guidance. It doesn't cost you anything, but if you do good for someone, it will return back to you in unexpected ways. If you have any queries, kindly get in touch on Facebook or Instagram, or you can also email me and I shall try to get back to you as soon as possible. And if you're interested to hear more from me, subscribe now to Meet Your Teeth. Wish you all the very best.